Hello, this is the trade site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, the 9th of June, 2014, and ending Friday the 13th. That's right, Friday the 13th. Hope you have had a great trading week this last week. Here's a look at the ES. This is the S&P Futures Contract on the daily chart. And again, we've been looking at this, uh, the 9-bar setup and then the 13 sell signal that gave us the sell-off in April, followed by a 9 after that. Now, there's a lot of distance between that 13 and that 9, and, and the 13 did give its, its breakdown exhaustive move. So if, if this is a 9.13.9, the interesting thing is right at the time we should have rolled over from it, we got the interest rate cut, the massive interest rate cut in Europe that's designed to stimulate, and uh, that has propelled the market higher. So now we're into a new count. Uh, we're three bars into the secret count itself. Actually, if I go to projection mode, including Friday's uh, setup, we're now four bars in, as you can see here. So, uh, you know, it's very possible that we're not going to get the 9.13.9 rollover uh, based on that. And the flip side, of course, to that is that the, here's a look at the NASDAQ 100 index. And I had talked about coming into the week that while the S&P may look exhausted, the NASDAQ is very constructive. You've got this cut formation and a short handle. And, of course, it also shot up on the, uh, the, the news out of Europe. But this is a breakout, pure and simple. It looks good, strong, nothing negative about it. So, again, get a lot of people, uh, I think, looking for reasons to expect the market to go down. And they've been uh, severely disappointed over the last couple of years, and they should be. And that's why, yes, we pay attention to the signals, but we also focus more on what's going on in the actual market when we do our trading during the day. You don't sit around and just start trying to short the market. This looks very bullish to me at this point in time. And it may be that we get all the way to a new seeker sell signal on both the S&P and the NDX before the market shows any signs of actually rolling over. Uh, here's the SOX index. This is now, uh, actually, if you include today, six bars up. And uh, here's the uh, biotechs, the MBI, which has been obviously lower. Not as strong, not doing anything spectacular, but uh, you know, nevertheless, we're tracking that as well. Oil still sitting near the 102, 103 area, and gold had slipped back down. Uh, here's a look at volume, and uh, not a good week. Volume, the 10-day moving average of volume hitting the low for the year down here, 1.6 billion. Four of the days this week were under that, and one day Thursday was back up to 1.8. Not surprisingly, we had a decent Monday and an okay Wednesday. Thursday was a big, big, big trading day uh, for the week, and, of course, that's the day of the volume. So we always talk about how important volume is in the market, and it makes a difference. Friday, we actually had some interesting plays. Uh, despite the fact that the volume wasn't that strong, and I came in using less size because I didn't expect uh, much out of it. So let's look at the intra-week action here. I'm going to go look at the S&P E-mini futures again uh, in 10-minute bars. So this is the whole week, as you can see. Uh, so we start last uh, last Friday. We had a 13 comer sell signal right out of the gate Monday morning, and we had the, the good morning I mentioned Friday was that sell-off. Came back and bounced back from that, went dead flat Monday. Little gap down that we eventually filled on uh, came yeah, right up to and filled on Tuesday. Little gap down Wednesday that we filled. And look at how flat these afternoons have been. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all flat after the first somewhere between hour and two hours of play. And nothing in the afternoons. And then Thursday was when the news hit. Market got wild. We did have a nice uh, run in the afternoon there. Friday gapped up. I had a little bit of opportunity in the first hour. Had some interesting plays. And then again, look how flat. So we're seeing what, what commonly happens in the summer, which is that the afternoons are flat. You know, you'd like to have one or two days a week where they come back and do something in the afternoon, but volume's been late, and uh, that's a function of I it. Mean, you got to go and make your money where the market's offering it, and it certainly isn't offering it currently in the afternoon. Here's a look at the NASDAQ 100 and the NQ's futures. Looks a lot flatter on Friday, gapped up and just dead flat. Obviously had the action Thursday. Uh, Wednesday actually had a decent day here, but Monday and Tuesday here uh, were dead flat. Still, much better week as far as I'm concerned than what we saw the prior week. Uh, for the Monday, Memorial Day holiday week. And uh, now we head into uh, really the core part of summer. We're starting to get there and Father's Day next uh, Sunday. But uh, no options expiration for another week. So let's take a look at the data that's coming out. Um, this is on the U.S. side all week. Nothing on Monday. Tuesday we've got wholesale inventories and the Jolt's job openings 30 minutes in. None of that's super significant. Wednesday, MBA mortgage index and then the crude oil inventories and Treasury budget in the afternoon, none of that's super significant. Thursday is the weekly initial claims, uh, and then retail sales, import export prices, business inventories, and the natural gas, natty gas inventories. Friday is PPI and Michigan sentiment. So I would say the um, 
you know, obviously the most data comes out Thursday. PPI can be important in that Michigan sentiment. Also keep in mind Europe is on holiday Monday, so Monday's probably going to be really, really, really slow. Uh, but hopefully we get some good action Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then summer Fridays tend to be a little late. Everybody runs out to see the new movie for the weekend or enjoys the beach and whatnot. Um, so we'll see what happens. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal 11. We look forward to helping you make money in the trade site lab. Have a great weekend and week.